Hi, this is Dr. Don, and we've been talking about what do couples do to build good relationships and marriages. A lot of people come in and visit with me in counseling or attend my seminars, and they'll walk up to me and they'll say, can you tell me what good marriages do? They will say, I grew up in a home where I never saw a good marriage. Or they'll say, I'm wanting to build a really good relationship. Can you tell me some simple practical things that couples do to build a good solid marriage? So let me suggest to you a short list of things that I would recommend you try to build a good marriage. And the first one on there is probably the most important one, which is you want to make sure that you regularly talk to one another. Now some of you are hearing me say that and you're thinking to yourself, I can't believe that you're having to tell people to communicate with each other. But we find that effective communication, talking to people, to one another, on a daily basis, is the lifeblood of a relationship. And it's kind of odd to think, but there are individuals who are married to each other and they are busy at work, they're busy raising their kids, uh, they have their own interests, and they run parallel. People will come in and tell me, I am married to this individual, but we don't spend any meaningful time with one another talking to one another. So one of the first things I have to do as a marriage shrink is to assign them time to sit down every day and have meaningful conversation with one another. So the first thing that we recommend to folks that are wanting to have a good, strong relationship is meaningful eye-to-eye -eye conversation with one another on a daily basis. Let me do a quick side note on that one related to technology for just a second. We all rely on our iPhones and we all rely on texting nowadays. Can I just encourage you that if you've got something serious and important to talk to your partner about, you don't rely on texting to do that because that can cause all kinds of misunderstandings because we tend to be using short sentences and there's not a lot of complexity and there's no emotion attached to it. Number two, we recommend that people in a good marriage make and keep a reasonable budget. Budgeting is our second key point in building a good relationship. Too many couples get into debt. They get into financial commitments that are over their heads. Uh, there's nothing really that adds the kind of stress that's ongoing and pervasive when there's not enough money around to solve the problems that we need to solve as a family. And so we really recommend that people make a good monthly budget they look at that thing at the beginning of the month, the middle of the month, and the end of the month, and one person may be assigned to take care of the bills, make sure everything gets done, but it is absolutely essential that the area of money be an area both people work on, and it is completely transparent. One of the things I encounter as a therapist, oftentimes people will come in and one person knows where the money is going and what's going on financially and the other person really doesn't have any idea what's happening there. That's just not very effective and we don't recommend that for a relationship. It needs to be a team approach to the finances and it needs to be an area where there's complete communication and transparency with that. Number three, we recommend regular sexual activity. Sex is that special bond that binds two people together in a physical communication and emotional bond that is unique to that couple. In fact, Dr. Ed Coates, my sex therapy professor, said that sex is the most intimate communication that occurs between two people. And so that bond that occurs between two people needs to be regular, it needs to be something that's prioritized, and it's incredibly important as a bond that brings two people together. There's two things that really help that. One 
is frequency and the other one is novelty. Now frequency can differ from couple to couple. Uh, frequency for one couple may be daily, frequency for another couple may be a couple of times a week. It varies, but it needs to meet the needs of both partners. By variety, we simply mean the same old thing day after day, week after week, month after month, just gets stale. So we recommend that variety be something that is an ongoing part of the dynamic of the sexual relationship between the man and the woman. Novelty is just really a good thing. Doing things a little bit different, spicing things up, going someplace, a hotel, lingerie, whatever it may be that we enjoy. So regular sexual activity is the third. Number four is we recommend that people schedule pleasure together. So I'm a big believer in fun. We are all way too stressed. We all have too much to do. My students here at Amberton University are going to school. They are running a family and they are keeping a full-time job together. And so when I talk to them about having some pleasure and some fun to relieve stress, they just kind of smile and nod their head and look at me. But it is incredibly important for a marriage that there be fun and times where we all de-stress because just going from work to work to work to work just builds that stress up and eventually it's going to come out in the marriage relationship in terms of conflict. Related to that, really good marriages, the partners learn how to value something that the other partner really values. Uh, if you're around me for any period of time, you're going to hear me talking about drums because I've been a drummer since I was five years old and my garage is built into a studio and that's my life when I'm not working. So if you're my partner, you're going to learn something about drums and come to appreciate that a little bit. And if I'm a good partner, I'm going to reciprocate. I'm going to learn something that you're interested in and give that to you as well. So we recommend fun and mutual interest in that regard. The fifth one is called dependence and independence. Dependence and independence. A lot of times when I'm doing premarital counseling with a couple, I'll get out a couple of quarters and I'll ask him to overlap those quarters as far as he thinks a marriage should be. What is your balance of dependence, overlap, and independence, the quarter still showing? And then I'll ask her to do the same thing. My parents grew up in a very traditional marriage and they did everything together. Uh, they did work together, they did hobbies together, they did everything together. So that overlap of dependence and independence was very heavy. There are other couples that have marriages where the overlap is minimal. They have separate lives, they come together a little bit and then go do their own thing and everything in between. It's not that there's one particular formula for doing that, it's that we as a couple have a similar picture of what independence, me doing my own thing, and dependence, us being a couple, what that looks like. And there are going to be times when life and work is going to mess with that a little bit. And so we need to constantly be monitoring that some. Number six is going to be good hygiene, is going to be appearance. Our partner fell in love with us because they like the way we look, because they're attracted to us. Now I am not here recommending that everybody tries to look like the cover of Glamour magazine because that's not possible. But what I am saying is your partner was attracted to you and that was a huge compliment in them saying the way that you are is highly attractive to me. I a lot of times hear women who are out dating and they're online dating and they're talking about their profiles that they're doing and they will say, I wish the guys would take off the sunglasses and remove the baseball cap so I could see their eyes and see their face and tell them to smile a little bit and throw away the old t-shirts from a football league. What they're talking about is they're talking about 
basic appearance and uh, giving some uh, 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 notice to the way we present ourselves and that's just as important in marriage as it is when we're dating. So one of the things we recommend is we give some ongoing attention to our own appearance, our grooming and our hygiene and we do that for our partners because that's very very valuable. The last thing I'm going to mention to you is order and management. I'll put it over here. Order and management. Good marriages take care of business. Good marriages are able to say, here's something we need to work on, and then they drive their resources to accomplish that. We need to pay off this credit card, and so they set money aside every month, and they do that. We need to make sure we plan for a vacation next June, and so they set aside time and energy to make that happen. We need to work at this job so we can get a promotion to move to that job so we're able to afford a house. So they do. People that are able to be organized, disciplined, and have order and management to their life are just easier to be in a relationship with. So those are some simple ideas of some things you can do with your partner to try and improve your relationships right now. <laughs>